Hey, cartographers, Dr. Jason Van Horn, professor of geography at Calvin University here. Today, we're going to take a look at that pesky little exclamation mark because you've lost your data. So we're going to take a look at where did this data go and how can we find the data that you know is there, but you've got this red exclamation mark. So first we'll talk about the problem and then a couple of solutions and then we'll talk about how we can avoid this in the future. So let's get started now. So here's the scenario. You've received some data from your colleague or downloaded it online. You've unzipped it, you've put it on your computer, you've opened the MXD, and the layers like in my table of contents uh, appear, but nothing in terms of data is in the data viewer. And so you've got these red exclamation marks indicating that the pathways to the data are broken. And so they need to be fixed. So how do we actually fix the, these, these, these data pathways? Well, this is the easiest way. First, let's take a look and see the properties for the layer and find the problem there. Okay, if I select the layer and I right click and choose properties, it looks like I'm a little in the way, sorry about that. Choosing properties at the bottom here. We're, we will go to the source tab, which is the second tab. Okay, here it is. And there is the problem. The problem is, is that this data was originally written on another person's computer at C workspace slash Honduras. Well, when I downloaded the data, I unzipped the Honduras folder and put it on my D drive. And so I didn't replicate the exact pathway that was originally created for this particular MXD and all of the data that's associated with it. So it's an easy problem to fix. First, let's take note of the actual file name. So here we have, it looks like geo boundaries, blah, 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 admin one. So we need to look for that in the Honduras folder. So I'm going to click the set data source button right here on this uh, layer property. And I haven't connected to the D drive yet. So let me do that. Okay, go to the D and my Honduras folder. And there is the data. All right, excellent. So here is the data, the layer. So if I were to select this layer and choose add, then it would add that layer into the table of contents and I would be able to see it. Now it doesn't fix number two, the, the other admin or any of the other layers, it just fixes this one layer. And so that's, that's a fantastic solution. But what if you have 15 or 20 different layers or maybe even more? That's going to be a lot of individual work of setting the data source again and again and again. So Esri has provided a very quick way for you to fix this problem. And let me show that to you now. So we'll cancel this and cancel this. And we'll go back up here to the table of contents. Now I'm going to right click on the layer. And this time, instead of choosing the properties, I'm going to choose data and then repair data source. Okay. When I choose that, then I can just pick the, the actual file itself. And when I do that, what will happen is all of the other relative pathways will be recognized in the existing data structure. And the software will try and bring in all of the other layers dynamically. And so let's do that. Let's just add this one and let's see what happens here. We should see both layers one and two populate in the table of contents. And that's exactly what happens. Notice here that we have Honduras admin one and Honduras admin two, and no longer do we have that pesky red exclamation mark, which drives us crazy. So we found our data and we've connected it correctly with the right pathway. And so let's take a look at admin two and there's our data, looks great. And now we can go about our business doing our GIS work. So what happened here? Well, the original creator of the data created it on their machine in a certain drive in a certain file folder structure. But they could have chosen to set relative pathways so that anyone can put that data, download it and put it on their machine on any drive in any file folder structure. To set relative pathways, it's simple. 
all you do is choose file and map document properties and then at the bottom here you could see under path names there's this checkbox called store relative pathways to data sources if you checkbox this then what happens is when you save this MXD and all of its corresponding uh, layers that data structure as long as it's preserved means that the, the person that takes down the data or maybe is in the lab and you've given it to them whatever machine they put it on or whatever file folder they put it in it will then display correctly I have to do this for all of the labs that I create for my students because I don't know what machine they're going to put that data on and I certainly don't know which drive they're going to use and so this will guarantee then that everyone has the same experience and is able to actually use the MXD and have all of the data associated with it come up correctly so that's the the way you can encourage your fellow colleagues and even yourself uh, to distribute data make sure that you set the relative pathways before you send that off to be used elsewhere so if you've liked this video go ahead and indicate that and subscribe to this channel for more GIS content and take a look at the links below where you can earn a GIS certificate at Calvin University and also take courses with me in the master's program uh, the Master of Geographic Information Science at Calvin University so thanks so much and see you soon